All right, and taking a look at a gold Moira Vod from Masuki. Said, how do you... I recently found myself watching a Kaku video of a GM TikTok Moira on King Zero. I've been trying to use a lot of what they did in my gameplay. Um, okay. Be careful taking on people's advice from ranks that are much higher than you because it's not the same sort of game, to be honest. Um, they will do certain things based off their team comp, based off player behaviors, based off the enemy team comp, the map, all sorts of things. Um, as well as it maybe even potentially acting off comms because when you get higher up, uh, people are generally better at comming. Um, so be careful. I haven't, I don't know what video you're referring to exactly, uh, but just, you know, tread lightly around things like that. Um, 11k damage and 9k healing. I'm not, I'm not usually a fan of seeing more damage than healing. Obviously there's team compositions where it, there's no option, like you could have a ball or a Doomfist for a tank, uh, a soldier or a May and a like Sombra or like stuff like that, like a pretty self-sufficient comp um, where you, the, the onus might be on you to do um, the do a lot of damage and there's not a lot of opportunities for heals, but looking at our team comp to start off, there is plenty of opportunities to do heals. And in fact, every time you're not doing healing and forcing the Mercy to do more healing, you're going to take away um, value in damage boosting um, your teammates, right? Uh, anytime she's not actively damage boosting the Reaper to be able to walk on their tank or the Junkrat to be able to spam out uh, and almost one-tap people or just the Rhine uh, to damage boost him when he, when he actually closes the gap on the Sigma. Um, those are sort of the the main things. Anytime you're possibly going to do that, you're not getting the most value out of both the heroes, so you always have to pay attention to your support duo, uh, most importantly, out of your team composition, um, to figure out how to best play around them. If you had someone else with a lot of healing, uh, a Baptiste, and Ana, a Life Weaver especially, uh, then there's obviously massive opportunities to go do DPS, uh, but likewise if you had a Zen, uh, Ilari, uh, somewhat Mercy, um, and a Lucio, then you want to be letting them utilize uh, or get the full value out of their utility, uh, which is for Zen, it's damage through Discord. For Alari, it's, you know, she'll just do her pylon healing and she'll only heal if she needs to, otherwise she'll do damage. Lucio will want to be on speed more than healing unless he's charging ultimate. Uh, and Mercy will want to be damage boosting, so things like that. Um, so just to mention that off the bat. So I think it's not necessarily a red flag, but we'll call it like a, a beige flag or, you know, somewhere in the middle. Um, it's just something to watch. Uh, you also died 11 times, which is fairly standard for the match. Um, also take deaths with a grain of salt. Deaths can be bad if you reflect on the game yourself and say, hey, look, that's 11 deaths that I shouldn't have had. Um, but also, if you're the last to die in every team fight and there are 11 team fights, then that's okay. You don't care about the deaths so much. Obviously, get out if you can, but if there are 11 deaths which were unavoidable and you were the last to die, no problems there. They're, they're not necessarily bad deaths. Um, happy with all Uta's usage. I'll skip to the issues. My cooldown's in that I throw orb without thinking a lot of the time. And when people target me, then I don't have healing orb to survive. Okay, I also fade too easily, so my tanking isn't as good. All right, so that's a big thing. Um, you need to make sure that they're earning your fade. Because if they're not, then... Um, you know, they're just going to keep being able to force you out, or you're going to miss the opportunities to be able to play aggressive. So uh, I won't talk too much more, we'll get into the VOD, but um, those are two things that we can be looking for uh, from the get-go, which is good to know. Um, so we'll look for orb usage and look for um, how easily they force fade out of you and whether or not it's warranted, and we can talk about if it's not. Um... Okay, if this is the, the the GM TikTok Moira gameplay of going on hard flanks, again, I don't know, I haven't seen the video, but maybe look at the video and check what their support duo is, because I don't think you can afford to break off so hard from your team. 
um, when you have a Mercy as your duo. Um, not so much the spacing, right? Like you're still a fade's distance away technically from your team, which is good. That's probably like playing to the limit that we want. Um, but it's the fact that there is like a wall here, a wall here, a pillar here, and then wall here as well. Like you can't possibly hope to get healing onto him in a quick manner um, if you need to. And there is opportunities to do this sort of stuff. Um, it's definitely not the wrong play to find an angle and look to pressure out a specific DPS uh, or just take jewels. But you need to help your team get through this initial stage, right? Like they're going to have such a harder time trying to actually get through spam coming from Junkrat, spam coming from Alari, spam coming from Sigma, and spam coming from Sojourn. Like this is a spam comp. You're going to take damage on these rotations. So you need to be helping them get from A to B sort of. And then when you get to this point, if the Rhine wants to push around this side of the statue, then you can look to push around this side and you can look to damage the Sojourn or whoever is uh, pushed up here. Um, likewise, even getting them to this point and then looking to swing either side uh, can be good. Like you can look for damage that way or you can go do this exact flank. But once your team has established some sort of uh, foothold through this choke, uh, because at the moment it's a, a big focal point where they're just spamming all of their damage and that's playing into their sort of win condition so just be careful of that uh, we don't i don't think it's wise to be splitting this hard from your team when all they have is single target mercy healing to sustain themselves um, because again your mercy doesn't want to be healing if she is she's not utilizing her kit she's not getting the full potential out of the hero and most likely you're not going to be able to carry a, uh, a mercy uh, that isn't damage boosting you know that's how she does her carrying So you can see our team just sort of gets melted because they're relying on such small amounts of healing and such bulk chunk damage. Like Alari does a lot of damage, a lot of high burst damage. Junkrat is obviously the same. Uh, Sojourn has almost a one-shot ability. Sigma just has infinite ammo and constant sustain from long distances, so a constant poke. Diva's getting forced out a bit. She's going to die. We're tunneling a little bit on the brig. It's not super important that she die. There we go. Yeah. So right there, we'll, we'll count that as one death that isn't good, but we can track them to see how many of them are actually uh, notable. Better off just letting yourself get hit by it and then fading to cure it instead of fading it too early and potentially still getting hit by it. Fade is as much a cleanse ability in some situations as it is a movement tool or, you know, a survivability tool. Part of the survivability is being able to cleanse negative effects like Sunstruck now. Ooh, that was, scary. that was scary doing that in front of a Sigma with Rock, but that's alright, we get away with it, so no harm, no foul. I like the timing though, right? Like you're trying to snowball this advantage that you've got and it's a quick charging ultimate so you're not holding onto it for more than a team fight. I like it, it's good. Diva's AFK. Briggs just going to come in and feed though. Oh, unlucky. I think he got caught on the payload a little bit. Yeah, I think maybe you throw a heal orb down for yourself and try and 80 strafe his damage uh, to live there rather than throwing a damage orb, but that's all right again. Not, that death not as worried about, right? You died last in the team. The team fight was already over. That's fine. And I guess to talk about heal orbs is just briefly because you mentioned you know what were your exact words that um you throw up without thinking a lot of the time so i mean without you know throwing it without thinking is one thing i guess that's just a uh, 
sort of going into a, a single comp session with the mindset of I'm going to improve my orb usage. I don't care if other aspects of my game suck. I don't care if I die more. I don't care if my fades are bad. I don't care if my alts are bad. I'm just going to focus on orb usage. Um, but basically the calculation you got to make in your head in a second is does this person need this heal orb to live? Or will they live easier or do I have an easier job of keeping them up by just killing the threats to them? And um, a lot of the time, I think as long as you're doing, um, I'll just mark this 415 we're in. Um, I think as long as you're whoops, sort of doing the the weave, if we can call it that, uh, it's sort of coined by Baptiste, damage shooting, damage shooting. I mean, shoot, heal, shoot, heal, sorry. Um, as long as you're doing that sort of stuff with your team, so you're spraying them, then you're damaging, uh, if I can even reach, then you're healing, then you're damaging. And you can see they're actually getting healthier faster than these robots are damaging them just by I'm spraying them, and I'm never actually running low on uh, heal spray, then that's fine. But the second they start to get like in critical situations and you know, maybe you're low on heal spray, then there's a time to look for heal orbs. But I think for the most part, you can lean towards towards damage orbs. I don't think there's an issue uh, regarding that. Um, but yeah, I think it was 4.15 was the timestamp we had, just to get my point across there. And of course you can use damage orb um, preemptively to act as a sort of um, counter to some heroes. Like obviously any chip damage you can do, like say there was a tracer on the flank just throwing orb into the room that you think she's in, uh, not only forces her to use a blink to get away from it, but also damages her a little bit and she wants to be topped up a lot of the time. Things like that. Um, unfortunately didn't see the trap, so that's a bad death. Uh, we'll just skip ahead. Uh, but likewise, if the enemy team had a D.Va and it was hard to hit orbs, then I'd be expecting you to throw heal orbs sort of parallel to your team or at the floor, like at your feet, uh, to heal yourself. Don't be lazy with your movement. Don't use fade as a tool to just get around somewhere quicker. Um, if you're going to fade away from this uh, overclock, which, uh, you know... A good sojourn is really scary with this ultimate. Um, that's fine. But I think you've already sort of kited it enough that you are already around this corner, and so this fade just becomes like a bit of a waste. And here's another way to orb is healing all people out of spray range, so that diva to send. But I'll be turning and looking at um, your Bastion in this moment right now too, because he just got rocked and then hit with a combo. Um, if the Seek hit any of his shots, he would be a little lower. Also thinking about who is shooting, like what is the threat? If it's a tank, you're not going to kill them, right? So using a heal of is good. Same if it's someone quite sustainable, like a Reaper with lifesteal, something like that. The, the chance of you killing them, or if they have a lot of cooldowns available, like the Tracer still has recall, right? Um maybe just hesitating because you don't have to throw orb out straight away i know it's good to use it because then you get it back quicker as well it's the same principle as starting off soldier damage uh with helix and then shooting rather than shooting first um but you just gotta weigh it up in your in your head around like you know how how effective is the orb going to be and then um there's more micro to it obviously like where you throw it to make sure it bounces off places close to you or if you're throwing it to where they're going to be like a tracer uh, or a genji or something um but for the most part yeah um just be thinking about is it more important that this my teammate definitely survive and i do everything to keep them alive or is it more a case of i need to force this threat out um and then i can still look to keep like like i was showing you before weave in the heal spray to get that four seconds healing over time. Um, 
I think again, and it has changed having a D.Va over a Ryan, but they may have made that swap because of how you're playing. Um, I think this is too hard of a flank, right? This is this is too deep. And it's cool that you alt uh, to try and just confirm a kill, but the fact that you don't confirm the kill is like quite a misplay. Um, obviously, we're not too concerned with the micro. We're more concerned with the Y. Um, but I think just staging up to high ground and then doing the same ult, hitting these two people at once and then potentially even healing your Bastion in the same ultimate um, probably gets more value. As well as, I think... Ultimate is a chance to still use as a tempo ult to let your team push in, um, especially to walk on the Sigma, because Sigma is always trying to keep his distance and keep poking from that distance. Um, I think if you can help your team get close to him with ult, uh, and then, you know, the splitting off and off angling comes second to that. It's like walking in and then split, uh, rather than splitting from here to get to here, because your team needs help. And I'm just doing this in like a, a picture. I'm not actually drawing on the map right now. Um, but from like A to B, right? You need to help them get there and then look to split off and find value. Um, doing this too early. Like, you think about, even if you get this Sojourn, right? That hasn't necessarily meant that your team has any space to capitalize off of this. And then the time it takes for you to come back and like heal them back up if they're low or like actually help them push. The Sojourn's probably come back off spawn, you know, things like that. Um, this would be more of a play to go for if you were in, like, an overtime situation and you needed to go force out a trance from a Zenyatta or something along those lines, right? Like, it's part of the win condition of the next fight that you go and solo kill this person. This is still like a massive improvement from like the first Moira Vods of you that uh, I ever saw though, so this is good so far. You can get up close and personal and go for a melee to finish her off in that scenario. It can be good to get up close and personal as Moira just to keep spamming um, quick melees in between your, uh, your damage over time just to have a little bit more burst because Moira really lacks that. It's a nice fade away. There's a trap right there that we noticed at this time. That's good. That was a good. So that was a good dash and heal orb. Uh, fade and heal orb. So uh, the junk rock got to jump on you. You would walk away. You throw a heal orb. It gets you up to full health. Nothing wrong with that. That was really good. I haven't noticed them force out your fade. Too much, but I guess that's a little harder to do on attack than it is defense. I'm worried about touching. Oh, we're tunneling a little bit here, right? You can see this. Your diva needs support right now. Right now, the objective is living, right? You've got damage coming in from the Bastion ult. Your team is coming back through the choke. You're just trying to touch and live at the moment. Part of that is throwing a heal orb and spraying for your D.Va right now, because they need it. Um, really good if you can keep D.Va topped, like, you can look to damage, but the second D.Va starts to slip below her armor threshold on her HP, that's when she really starts needing help, because she's about to take a lot more damage a lot quicker um, once that armor is gone. Just to give some more tips on orb, I would be throwing a heal orb out on point right now because you don't want anyone to get picked off in an overtime scenario. You've already won the fight, you don't need to go and kill people. Uh, and if anything else, it just gives you ult, ult charge because you're going to need a coalescence to win this next fight and push it to the checkpoint. Again, if someone gets the jump on you, I think it's good to just throw a heal orb if you're unsure of who is there. Like, I don't think you ever saw a... Um, in fact, I thought it was a junk rat before I heard the actual clink of her footsteps when she dropped. Um, and maybe just throwing a heal orb right now saves someone if they're about to die. The diva's like, 
a whip shot from death, but she gets her mech off, which is good. And good, yeah, throwing damage orbs out in the poke. They're gonna focus the Bastion, so we can be pocketing him right now. He's gonna get picked off. And this is sort of the the elevation of supports through from plat through to diamond and masters is starting to anticipate who is about to be in danger who's in more who, who's in more danger who's more of a threat to them um because they're about to get focused like who's absorbing the most pressure right now it's normally diva but if diva is then used her abilities and gets forced out and then the barret uh, sorry the bastion rolls out into turret form next to you the bastion's about to take a lot of damage because they're going to focus him out if they're not kiting um so you need to pocket him in that moment and then maybe like after those two abilities have been used and the enemy has thrown cooldowns back at them then is your opportunity to do something like this and i think this is a decent fade um i like the maxing min maxing i've seen so far of you fading and orbing before your coalescence if that's something you got from the video then i do support that obviously that's a good um that's good maximizing the the potential of the hero um i would be solo killing the brig with coalescence if she walked up but that's cool we got the kill anyway nice I liked it, it was good, but right now I'd be angling myself in a position to still be hitting as many people as possible. Um, Coalescence is really only about forcing onto one person if they're one tap, right? So instead of trying to just focus on this sojourn, and I'll pause it again like this, uh, we can be positioned somewhere like here, and all of a sudden we're hitting three, and it's really easy to flick. And just quickly heal up people maybe you can focus him and actually direct it on him or you can keep using your movement to look to keep the pressure on the sojourn and then hit the junk rat and then you swing back around you do some healing on the way you passed and you keep pressuring the bap then uh, things like this are good to keep in mind when you're using coalescence i like to kill on the bap though that's good finish off that kill it's good we missed a bit of healing right in our damage not to say that it wasn't the play, um, but maybe the micro here is to, when you're looking to just absolutely bully a single target or two targets and focus on the DPS of the ult, that this orb is a heal orb that goes back to your team. Um, likewise, if you're not doing a flank ult where you're pushing into the backline um, like you are, if you're more using it as a tempo and, and uh, boosting your team up, and you're doing it from back here and maybe positioning on an angle like this so you're hitting bastion diva sigma and baptiste or you know slightly rotating to hit sojourn and junkrat um then this is a damage orb that gets thrown in and then you alt even if it's a slight off angle like um somewhere over here then you know, same thing. Uh, if you're looking to maybe damage, then maybe you can throw a heal orb against this wall and it'll ricochet um, back to your team. So it'll keep staying in this area, keep healing people here. Um, or if you think you can uh, also heal people with your ult, then you're throwing a damage orb uh, against this wall because that'll most likely hit them for the longest duration of time. Right? Got to get a bit of a uh, bit of your protractor out and, and figure out your angles with your Moira orbs. I hope this is making sense though. Sort of talked about the bigger ideas uh, regarding orb and, and alts at the, uh, at the start, or I guess orbs in general, um, and now we're sort of just like breaking apart your decision making with them each time. Um, I haven't gotten the feel, again, I haven't gotten the feel, I'm assuming that was the last fight, I haven't gotten the feel that your for, uh, aid has been forced out, um, but that could be different on defense. Chunk right on your right, gets a kill. How does this happen? She's antied. When someone's antied, throw out a damage orb, put pressure out to stop them pushing in. Messi gets dinked. Orisa's dead at this point, so you just need to like chill here and pocket your Bastion, and Bastion will put out a lot of pressure to stop them from hard pressing W into you. If he's critical, don't just do the, the heal spray tap, like actually pocket him a little bit. You don't have to burn your entire spray 
on him. Uh, but yeah, this is good. Like you're pocketing him. Um, if you can't heal, then be doing the the spam tech to uh, get your spray back quicker. And I'll just show you that in case I haven't before. Eleven forty-five. Um, if we go into practice range again and just pick up Moira. So if I use all my spray right now, um, you can see my help, my spray bar goes up pretty quickly. But if I instead instead of holding down right click on them, I'm going to tap it on it. It's going to come back a lot quicker. But you can obviously see I'm um, in the time I filled my health bar, uh, my spray powder. I did like maybe two thirds of the amount of DPS that I did from holding it. So that's the trade-off. If you need healing powder in a in a quick moment, in a uh, you know in, in rapid succession, then tapping it will get it back quicker. Um, and I know some like Moira mains bound their damage to scroll wheel, so they can do it really quickly. Um, but otherwise, you can just you can just hold it, and that'll be fine uh, if you don't need it in a rush. Um, still want to be ideally looking at um, squishies to recharge it. And not tanks, but sometimes uh, when you do need it quickly, tanks are the thing that is most accessible, so it's fine if you need to. But, you know, may as well be killing two birds with one stone and, and pressuring out squishies, because you do more to them with your um, limited amount of damage. A little bit of learning on how on whether people are already too far gone or not. I wouldn't have been dropping here unless you're dropping with your Orisa. I think you're really demanding a lot of resources from your Mercy right now. Your Orisa gets critical because of it and then she's gonna have to pick. You're probably dead and the Orisa probably is too. Yeah. Mercy goes for the res, gets it but they don't contest. Unfortunate. But just hesitating a little bit. Um, recognize the situation right the the orissa has to touch card it's sort of similar to when the diva had to touch it before um your D your dps aren't with you you're not in a position to go get picks you don't have ult um but you could get ult pretty quickly by just pocketing the orissa and using all of your resources on her um just for a little bit you might be able to get coalescence and then go make a play so maybe just rushing these flanks too hard uh rushing these um jewels um and also just going in positions that are like a little too aggressive like too too far removed from your team um if there's a wall between you or if you're fade if you're fading to get to them and it's putting you in a bad position um then that should be a red flag you know you, you can be in a fades distance but your fade should still have you ending up in a safe space because you don't have it for the next six seconds so you need to live like, this is good, but we need to also be throwing, you know, heal spray to our left and be hitting people. Um, or if we're here for an extended period of time, uh, being able to throw a heal orb to them and it actually hit them. But I like that. That was, good. That was a lot of value. Um, like I say, it's just a bit dodge. I don't think I'll get through the whole VOD, so we might just go through one more team fight coming up on half an hour here. And so this is what I like, right? This is what I'm sort of referring to. You helped your team push through this choke. Um, you helped them actually take space. And then when the fight was sort of happening here, you looked to split off. And if you knew the Sojourn was here, this would be like a really good sign. Like I would have really liked this interaction. He got caught a bit off guard, but the point still stands is that you could quickly rotate up to here and you could be having access to their backline, to the same people you're trying to duel while still being in heal spray distance to your team slash being able to fade back to here, safe location, being able to fade just behind the front line um, to like anywhere sort of in this remote area. Um as well as throw damage orbs in uh, and have the ricochet and whatnot. Um, 
yeah, I think this is like a powerful and more of the better positioning you've had so far. Yeah, nice. Okay, well, that's uh, that's as much as I, I want to reveal on this because I think um, we've made the case in point enough. I don't think your fade got forced out too often. Um, I don't like it's definitely not as pressing as maybe the the decision making side of things that we need to focus on now to get us to that next level. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully that all made sense. Um, hopefully breaking down different scenarios in which uh, heal or might be better and damage or might be better um, sort of helped you to understand and maybe start to make some decisions in quicker succession around like which one you should be using whether it's to uh, you need to keep your team alive uh, the scenario demands that you be healing and you be uh, sustaining people to do the damage because they do it better than you or if you can just straight up go do that damage and um, and sort of play the more DPS more play style. Um, not that I want you to be so passive that you're just sitting in main healing all the time, um, but this is a good amount of limit testing you're doing now, and now we just need to find a nice middle ground where you're finding these opportunities for damage, but it's not costing anyone their lives, because a few times people were dying next to you, whether it be Bastion or Mercy or the tank when you are the primary source of their healing, um, because the Mercy just has to be able to damage boost people otherwise. Uh, you know, in the mirror, uh, if their mercy is able to damage boost and yours isn't, your DPS are going to have such a hard time. So hopefully that helped. Uh, let me know if anything didn't and all the best with the games.